cataractcoach.com. What can we learn from the first eye to help with surgery of the second eye? Very interesting case here. So here's the eye of the cataract. You can see the anterior chamber is very shallow. The gap between the anterior lens capsule and the cornea is very narrow. So this slip beam image shows the whole picture. You get it. Here's another picture. Again, a very shallow anterior chamber, less than two millimeters in anterior chamber depth. The lens is very dense. There's a, at least a three to four plus nuclear cataract. Again, you can see here in this image, it's not gonna be a simple surgery. What other clues do we have here before we do surgery on this eye? Well, let's look a little bit more carefully. When we look at this eye, we see yes, for sure. Look at the gap between the reflex off the anterior lens capsule versus the cornea. That gap between the two, that's the anterior chamber depth. And it's low, it's less than two millimeters in this eye. Now zooming in, what do you see there? This fibrillar material, that's pseudoexfoliation. And we know that material causes not only a, a poor dilation, but also a weakness in the zinal attachments. Here's another picture, that same eye. Here's the cataractus eye, and you can see there's an extensive amount of pseudoexfoliation material. Well, how's that gonna make the surgery difficult? Let's look at the other eye. Here's the other eye, it's already sort of fake. It looks pretty good, right? But look carefully. What's the capsular exercise? Is there capsular phimosis? And more importantly, there is capsular phimosis. The lens is a six millimeter optic. The capsular exercise today is less than four millimeters in diameter. That means there's been sufficient or a lot of contraction of the capsule to cause that. Now look here, there's a big gap between the iris and the anterior lens capsule. Look at the gap there. That's what I wanna point out to you. That's gonna change our lens calculations even. So we know this eye that already had surgery had significant capsular phimosis, and when the lens capsule contracted, it also pulled the IOL closer to the retina. And this patient went from Plano to plus a half, to plus 75 in the refraction. That means when we do the calculations of the other eye, let's be smart here. Let's anticipate that you'll get the same contraction of the capsule and the same posterior displacement of the eye wall optic. So when you do the lens calculation for the second eye, let's not aim for Plano. Do, do your regular lens calcs, but aim for at least minus 0.5, maybe even minus 0.75. Again, that's the first eye. And you can see there's that big gap between the hours and the lens. When the capsule contracted, the eye well was pulled back posteriorly closer to the retina. So again, here's our eye we're going to operate on. And you can see dense cataract, shallow AC. But we know don't aim for Plano. Aim for minus a half, even minus 75. And then in the long term, once that eye heals up and the capsule contracts and there is that phimosis, the eye wall will pull closer to the retina and we'll be happier that we chose the higher eye wall power. Thank you for watching. If you want to submit a video, please let us know. If you want to follow us daily, go to cataractcoach.com, click on the link there. Join our free email list. We have a new video every single day and we'll deliver it for free right to your inbox. Thanks for watching.